Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hamlin. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and I'm also joined by Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Good to see you. It's dark with you. Must be cold. You got your jacket on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cooling down now in the UK for winter. Winter nights. Um, what we thought we'd discuss today um, was um, something that's possibly slightly different for a lot of the, a lot of our audience on WebPixel Live, and that's photo sub competitions. Um, and perhaps the, the best place to start is if I ask Alex to explain what a photo sub competition is. Uh, that's a bit, that, that's a good one for you. What's a photo sub competition, Alex? <laughs> well, I'm actually I'm going, I'm going to start with the spelling in that photo <laughs> sub because it's you know probably got its roots really in in around the Mediterranean. Is photo with an F, so it's oh, F O T O sub. Oh. Yeah, so photo sub is is is, is how it's spelled. And I didn't know that. This is a, a style of on the day competition. On the day competitions exist quite widely in underwater photography, and most fall into the photo sub style. Um, I think in English countries, in the UK, we tend to call them splash ins. Mm. Um, in the States, they call them shootouts. Mm. Um, but the, the aim of pretty much all of them is the same: is to try and create a level playing field between photographers yep. to have a test of photographic skill in producing good pictures on the day. Yep. I think the competitors have maybe gone beyond that definition in what they're trying to achieve and certainly the best way to have success is actually to really realize this is a sport that you train for, that you prepare for and the aim of the, the day is, is something a little different to normal for creative photography Definitely. it's actually yeah. a test of your skills not your creativity uh, as a photographer in that moment and we'll come back to that a little bit yeah um most of the competitions are, are sort of run in a cmas style cmas um you might have to tell me what cmas stands for <laughs> i was hoping you weren't gonna it's, it's, it's yeah it's, it's, um, a, it's the world Sovaco federation it's, yeah, um, and, and, and you, you have probably something similar yeah but um, when i was a judge um at the the world championships i was inducted into the the, under, the, um, the World Underwater Federation of CMAS's Visual Commission, yep. which is their photographic um, um, branch. And they gave me this flag, um, my, my daughter's, um, the stand that it hangs on. Has gone, yep. But I thought I'd show this off. Yep. My, uh, um, and, I know the M stands for Mondial, which is, which is global. Yes. So <laughs> there we are. <laughs> um, we, we, we probably should know. I, I'm sure I did know at the time. Yeah. If you've ever watched um, Luc Besson's film, um, The Big Blue or Le Grand Bleu, um, in that, there's CMAS running a lot of the um, the free diving championships, and that level of um, bureaucracy yeah. is something that sort of permeates these. And I think if you ever want to get a feel for a little, a kind of a tongue-in-cheek feel for what these competitions are like, that film, watch that and imagine it's unruly artistic photographers rather than than free-spirited free divers that they're trying to control. Yeah, crawl. But um, yeah, anyway, anyway um, I think one of the things that's really interesting about these competitions is that in the countries that really take part in them, which is many countries, yep. it is a very serious thing. Yep. And it, it, it's a real focus for a lot of people's entire underwater photography. Yep. They have regional and national qualifiers to make um, a national team to go to the world championships, which is run every few years. I think they're up to about... 18 or 19 world championships now yeah. i'm not not don't remember the number offhand um and people you know train for a long time um to to get to 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 progress and eventually represent their country and try and win medals for their country yep. and the the cmas cmas are affiliated with the olympic movement so the whole aspect of it has to um adhere to the strict controls of Olympic things. So the competition side is very strictly controlled to make it as even a playing field for everyone. Yep. And that goes for, 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 you know, right the way through for training dives and, and equipment. And I'll come on to a little bit of that in, in, in a minute. Um, it also means actually, because you know the whole big CMAS World Championship events starts with all the pomp and fanfare of the Olympics, yep. not quite the money behind it, but you, know, you have a parade of nations um, most of the teams turn up in national tracksuits. A lot of the countries, because it's part of their sports program, you know, the results are reported in the sports newspapers. Yep. Um, people have, the, the, the teams wear the same tracksuits and clothing that the the athletes who are going to the Olympics are going to. Yep. Um, not all the photographers have quite the same physique as the Olympic athletes. Sadly. Um, but but the, um, the 
but, um, so, some of the, uh, I mean, a lot of some some of the countries actually get funding. Um, some of the yep. teams get the national teams get funding, and, and that funding comes from the IOC, from the the Olympic Commission. So, um, and obviously there's a national Olympic Commission. But but you know, it's very much seen as you're going out there to represent both yourself and your country. It's a real mm. kind of, and, and the, the countries that really get behind this, it's a great honour to go out and represent your mm. country. You know, it's um, it's seen as as being being a, a very important thing to do. Um, and, and certainly the World Championship is a fantastic networking event for photographers. Mm, you just, get the chance to meet incredible photographers from all around the world with very different backgrounds. Yeah. And whereas before the competition, everyone is very carefully guarded. Yeah. Once the results are out and it's two, three years to the next one, everyone's very open about techniques. And it's a great place for new ideas. And people tend to keep a lot of new techniques quite secret in the run up to it. Yeah. Debut them at the competition and then they permeate other aspects of underwater photography. And I do think it's a, a weird subculture because a lot of underwater photographers pay no attention to it. They yep. don't even know it goes on. Yep. Yet some of the highest standard of underwater photography is within this realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and people get very dedicated to it. You know, it, it, it's not, um, it, it, it's some people that basically this is what they do. You know, if there's, if there's a season that they take, for, they do their, for their underwater photography, you know, in Southern Europe, for example, um, and, you know, they will, for that whole season, they will be, Entering competitions, building up images towards competition, towards folks on competitions, entering that competition, um, and it becomes a, it becomes a really sort of all enveloping process. Yeah, absolutely. It's and, and in the countries that it's popular, and you know, Spain for example is a very popular mm. one. They have a lot of competitions. There's almost every weekend a different dive area within the country will organise a big photo sub event, mm. and they get properly big sponsorship and big cash prizes. You know. Yep thousands of euros cash prizes and for photographers it can be actually a, a living you know yep. when they're winning a lot it can become their entire income yep. and so it really is a in very interesting area and a lot of these competitions are open and if any photographer fancy getting into it you'd find that you know there's a whole whole area there that's very they don't tend to create the same international cachet of winning as say winning the big um, international photographic competitions that are open all the time but I think in terms of prize money, it's, it's a very, you know, you're actually winning cash. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's really, you know, very lucrative. Um, I think, uh, just talk a little bit about the organization. The aim of Photosub events is to create this level playing field yeah. um, where photographers are strictly controlled in terms of where they're allowed to dive, how long they're allowed to dive for, and they all dive at the same time at the same sites. Yeah. Now, often they might be diving, you know, they, they within a big competition, you might be split over a number of sites. Yep. And the order in which you dive them is usually chosen by type, by ballot. Is, but yeah. you, you generally, the aim is to give everyone the same possibilities over the dives. Yep. And the aim of the competition is to produce a portfolio of it's usually six pictures on different themes. So it's not take six wide angle pictures. It's usually a typical competition might have a macro picture, a fish picture, a wide angle picture, a wide angle with a model. Yep. So the wide angle pictures without a model. Then there might be a theme category that no one knows until they turn up. Yep. And there may be a very creative category, yep. something like that. And you have to produce these six pictures, all of which will be scored. And the photographer with the highest score is the overall winner. Yep. And then there's also prizes for the highest picture in each of those six themes. Yep. But the, the key thing to be successful in it is to actually score well in all six disciplines. Yep. Um, yeah, you have to, yeah. Yeah, I think the other things to say is that um, it's there's no post processing typically allowed. Certainly, no external camera post processing. Yep. Most of them now allow you to do the in camera processing because they can't please it. Yep. So you're allowed to crop pictures in camera. However, the organisers take your cameras and your memory cards away from you after each dive. Yep. So you can't go back to your hotel room and spend ages on the back of your camera. You actually have to do all that in camera processing on your safety stop during the dive. Yeah, as the, soon as you surface, your camera is taken from you. At the World Championships last year, they actually specified that you had five minutes hanging on the line to do any editing um, at the end of the dive, um, mm. and um, but that included that was included in your dive time. So I, th I, I, I think it was a 60-minute dive time maximum, and if yeah. you wanted to do any editing, the last five minutes of that was on the line. So, yeah. and so, if you break the rule, you're out, aren't you? Oh, absolutely, you know, yeah. If you're yeah. up late, you know, goodbye, you're going home. Absolutely. It's the only way they can enforce and, it. So it's, it's really. 
it's a it's a it's quite a thing to observe because the the so the 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 contestants um what they did at the, so the world championships last year in Tenerife they the the memory cards were um each day the the contestants handed in a memory card to the judging panel um the judging panel formatted it and kept it um mm. and then before the dive they downloaded it before they formatted Sorry, Ed. Well, that's assuming, but it, well, it could be a blank memory card. But basically, before the dive, they put, they put, they they gave the card back, go into the camera, and the housing is then sealed, um, with mm. the judge watching it. Um, and then after the dive, the judge watches the seal being broken. The card comes out and gets given to the judge. Um, and you know, so there's literally, there's no, you know, the the cards mm. you can't do anything with them. You know, it's, it's it's whatever's on the card is is what what ends up going into the competition. Um, and I, I know in a lot of competitions. The reason they allowed the in-camera processing is they couldn't really stop it, to yeah. be honest. It was about, it was the only way they could make things fair. Yeah. Most of the contests, all the pictures have to be JPEGs. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, you're, there's no raw file fiddling. It's Everything is shot in JPEG and all the pictures are judged directly out of the camera. Yeah. Um, we're allowed to crop in camera, yeah. um, but you're not allowed to do all that. Um, techniques like double exposures are very popular. It's a great way of diversifying your pictures. And particularly in the Mediterranean, where all these contests are, as I think we've spoken before, the great light is in the shallows. A lot of the subjects are in the deep. So people tend to do quite a lot of double exposures to make the pictures more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think another really important point to make is it's very much a team event. Almost every photographer dives with a, an assistant slash model yep. who helps them in finding subjects, helps them in, you know, um, in, in coming up with ideas for shots. And most, perhaps most importantly, as a model in, in the model pictures. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they train a lot together to be able to work really efficiently underwater so they really both know exactly the shots. Yeah. And I would say that the, the challenge of the contest is not to be a good photographer, but it's to be a really be able to technically execute your planned shots in the time period. Yeah. So usually the competition is, is preceded by some training days. Photographers come up with ideas on those dives, try and make really good shots, and then decide what the shots they're going to go for on the day are, maybe with a few backups in mind. And then the successful photographers are the ones that can go down on the dive and exactly reproduce the shots. So what you tend to get out of it are photographers who are very technically capable of producing artistically attractive shots on demand. Yep. You know, in a very limited time period, because you're only often given four dives to create these six pictures. And a lot of the time, people may want to come up during the dive and change lens so they, on this particular site, can get their wide angle shot. So they'll go down, do their wide angle without model, do their wide angle with model. After half an hour, they're back on the surface. Um, they put their macro lens on and they're back down, maybe doing a double exposure, maybe doing a couple of macro shots. This was um, certainly you know, they're, they're really, really, really training to get through those. Portfolio. Certainly true in Tenerife, where the, where the actual the, some of the dive sites were much more productive than others. So as a result, you know the the, the productive dive sites they were literally maximising it by getting as many shots in the bag as they could. Um, yeah. And then on the on the sites that were less productive, then you know they were being forced to kind of go and hunt the, the shots more. Um, yeah. So so yeah, there were I mean there was a lot of kind of lens changing and thing going on in in between in between in between dives. Mm. Sorry during dives and so on and so forth so yeah it was um it, it's certainly it's, it's a very exciting um thing to watch people doing because it is very competitive it's you know it's, yeah and, uh, and, and I, think, I think yeah i think the point we should really make is that it really really improves people's skills mm. all the photographers i know who've done photoshop you take them to a coral reef and they're just like or you take them you know on a normal trip and they're just like bang 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 they can just nail everything really really efficiently so it's mm. it's brilliant for developing those skills mm. Mm. um i do think it tends to create photographers who tend to shoot in a very certain way yeah um they tend to often have quite mm, quite narrow portfolios yeah. because they you know the judges tend to expect a certain type of shot yeah. um and as a result and the photographers know that certain types of shots are easy to reproduce yeah. and so they tend to go a little bit as we all do have their favorite ways of shooting and know if i do this this and this I'll get my shot. I'll get that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. So I think just we should finish off by talking a little bit about the judging because yeah. actually that's the area that you and I have had our most direct experience in yeah. as we, we've both judged. I've, I've judged many photo subs um, in, in Spain. Um, I've judged a lot of national competitions around the place remotely, um, quite often judge, you know, being doing live judging but from home yeah, of the yeah. pictures as they come in. 
Yeah. But I found the judging for the World Championship absolutely fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Because the because it has to adhere to the Olympic standards. It's judged very like sort of um, figure skating or um, gymnastics at the at the at the Olympics, where you have a panel of judges and they score everything out of ten. Yeah. And we scored every picture out of ten. Yeah. And actually, the way we, we did our judging is we sat in an auditorium surrounded by the entrance as a panel of judges and as each picture came on the screen we were shown them once and then we went through them again and we had to give them a score out of 10. Yeah. And there was I think we had six judges or maybe yeah six judges and the top and the bottom score were always ignored yeah. and then the score for the picture was the average of the four judges. Yeah. And when you scored your flag because there was one judge from each country next to your flag was your score. So every photographer knew what every judge scored their images. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't believe that's the best way to judge a photographic competition. I think the best way to judge a photographic competition is to put judges in a room and give them time with the images, time yeah. to see them multiple times, time, yeah. importantly, to discuss what they think about the images. Because often I will change my opinion of an image of how good I think it is when another judge explains to me why well, they think it's amazing yeah. or why they think it's rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And the, 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 the photo sub system doesn't give any flexibility for that. But I, I like this total transparency of the judging. Yep. And obviously if the home judge, you know, sees a picture and they know it's from their team and they give it a 10, their judge, their, their score is, is, is ignored, which yep. is why they ignore the top and the bottom score. Yeah, yep. And it also stops them when their big rival team comes up, they can't give it a naught, you know, yep. to, to, you know, so it, balances it, makes itself it, average, out. Yeah, it balances itself out. Yeah, yeah. But I found it really interesting to judge like that. Yeah, uh, I, I I thought that um, that one of the most interesting things about the the image or the process really was that it very much the the, the you were judging the best photographer on the day, um, mm. you know it, it it was as as close you could get to a fairly empirical competition between people where people were competing on this level playing field, and and it's basically whoever managed to achieve the best image at that point on that day um, mm. and as such you know that that's quite unique because that's the majority of underwater photography competitions we don't have that idea it's just the best image um, yeah. but obviously there's a whole bunch the of very who goes to the best place has the most dives yeah. Yeah, often yeah. finishes near the top whereas yeah. this is removing all of that from it yeah yeah i think i think it's fascinating and it's a very pure form of um, it's a very pure mm. form of um, of of competition i think yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I i think that the counter to that is it's actually a test of who can come up with the best ideas before the competition yep. and then recreate them on the day, as opposed to, I think, an important skill of, of photography is seeing subject matter you don't expect and capture that in a, in a really, and it doesn't test that. No, but, you know, I, I mean, I think, you know, you can't possibly, I mean, pictures like that can still do well. If something amazing happens, yeah. photographers should chase it. And I, they I, often do I think well they do. Yeah. Their yeah. Shop. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I mean, I think so that's not, that's not a fair really, criticism from me, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I've always been a really big fan of it, and yeah. I've always made an effort throughout the history of Wet Pixel to when there've been big championships to try and um, highlight them on Wet Pixel, and because I do think that this the photo sub community exists quite a lot in a bubble. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. they're incredibly talented, but actually, the vast majority of underwater photographers have never heard of most of the photographers. Yeah. I mean, even someone who follows it, I couldn't tell you who the current world champion is off the top of my head. I know some of the people who won recent competitions, but I can't remember who's the one who won it last time. And I think that's a pity because yeah. those are the photographers we really should be paying a lot of attention to. The CMAS did change the rules slightly on the last one in, in that there there isn't a world champion. There's a champion in each category. So there are six world champions. Um, well, so, okay. so I think that's is, a pity. I think yeah. for me... It was, I understand that actually they were to some extent creating, you know, promoting a good average as opposed to outstanding individual images, yeah. which outstanding individual images are more important in photography. Yeah. However, I thought as a challenge, yeah. creating a, a wide portfolio was actually a sterner challenge than just creating one good shot. Yeah, I think, I think there, there's an unofficial, um, there's still obviously the unofficial um world champion points but uh, champion. yeah yeah people know yeah, people everyone who, knows who won on points who got the most points but the official yeah. one is that them um, yeah so the the uh, the world championships are planning to be held next year 2021 obviously covid permitting there's uh, the world's up in 
Um, no one really can plan too much at the moment, but that certainly is, is I believe, the plan. Um, so I'm sure that um, we'll be talking about it and covering it in future episodes of WebPixel Live. Um, and, and a huge number of countries do get involved. I think people think it's, you know, it's predominantly based around the Mediterranean, but there, it's often 30 plus countries. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. All corners of the globe. Japan, Argentina, you know. Um, mm. Yeah, no, it is, it is all over the world. Yeah, it's a, it's a great thing. Um, so thank you very much, Alex. Um, I um, will uh, will will bid you good night. I think it's the correct phrase at this point. Um, and I'd like to thank our sponsor, which is Reef Photo and Video. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope this episode has been interesting and inspired you to take part in Photoshop, perhaps, or, or certainly to take more note of it. Um, and um, um, please feel free to add any comments or possibly your experiences with Photoshop in the comment section and drop us a like if you enjoy it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.